welcome to Fully Charged News. Now, I've got a couple of interesting stories which will be followed by a report of a recent 750 mile road trip I did in my new Tesla Model 3. Uh, so that's coming up in a bit. But first of all, I just wanted to cover a couple of interesting stories. Question, right at the beginning. Would you be happy to fly in a hydrogen fuel cell powered uh, autonomous passenger drone? Now, I have been sceptical for quite some time about the, the idea of, uh, of flying taxis, which is effectively what these are. They fly themselves, you don't have to do steering or flying. They just go and take you somewhere. I do think these things are getting closer to being plausible. Uh, I think it's going to very much depend on the right weather conditions. You could imagine that there would be sort of stormy, very windy weather would make these flying in one of these things fairly unpleasant and quite risky. Uh, and then it's a question of what powers them. Well, hydrogen fuel cells seem to have a little bit of an inroad there. They're certainly struggling to get any traction on ground-based transportation, particularly uh, small passenger vehicles. I think we're likely to see uh, trucks and buses and earth movers that are powered by hydrogen fuel cells, but I cannot see still yet a, a large uptake of uh, you know, small passenger vehicles uh, with hydrogen fuel cells. But the skier flying taxi does look slightly more interesting. Now, a new air taxi startup company, Alakai Technologies, has just uh, announced a liquid hydrogen powered fuel cell flying taxi uh, that they claim will you know fly longer further and have more power than the battery powered ones that are being developed by many other companies here's an interesting thing all uh, land-based hydrogen fuel cell vehicles have to have batteries in them this is a thing that's it's constantly i had constantly go on about on twitter because people say you know who just go i'll wait for the hydrogen model i go yes carry on waiting please do uh, all uh, hydrogen fuel cell cars have a battery pack and trucks and buses, quite a big battery pack, uh, because they need that to get them going when you do stopping and starting. Well, in a hydrogen fuel cell flying taxi, you'd be on the ground, it would start, it would start, feeding, uh, electric, uh, start feeding hydrogen into the fuel cell, that would start producing electricity, you could slowly build up the, the power levels, the engines start firing up, you're producing enough electricity to run the motors, then you take off. So you've got, and once you take off, you're not going to stop when you're up in midair. You, you really don't want to do that. You want to carry on. So a hydrogen fuel cell can produce a constant uh, source of electricity, uh, which will run all the motors. You fly, you come back into land, and then it all closes down again. That can make sense. You wouldn't need any batteries. And if you don't need batteries, you can save weight. And that is quite an interesting thing. So I think it's worth watching. So moving on, uh, my new Tesla Model 3, uh, it is an amazing car. I won't go on about it too much now. I, I think we have to do a sort of proper long-term review of it. This is just a really, uh, you know, handmade, solo shot, slightly wobbly camera uh, record of my recent trip to Eindhoven in the Netherlands. Um, uh, so I, I drove from Gloucestershire in the British Isles to uh, Eindhoven in the Netherlands to uh, do a presentation for Lightyear, the amazing car company. A little bit more about that later. Anyway, here's the report. <sighs> so um, I'm doing a very long journey for the first time. It's a road trip of sorts in the uh, Tesla Model 3. It's a bright sunny morning at the moment. I am driving from where I am now in Gloucestershire in the west of England to Eindhoven in the Netherlands, actually to Helmond, which is just outside uh, Eindhoven, uh, to present a webinar for um, Lightyear, the amazing solar car that we featured earlier this year. Uh, that's tomorrow morning, and, and I didn't want to fly there. Could have flown to Eindhoven Airport, but I'm sort of trying to, you know, not fly as much. Mm -hmm. Not doing well at the moment with the forward planning, but, you know, doing my best. And actually, it's very easy to drive there in terms of, you know, um, charging and all that kind of stuff. It's not even a remote problem, but it does take quite a long time. Anyway, I currently have 307 miles of range and, and I've got to get, do 150 miles now to get to Folkestone, to the Euro Tunnel entrance where there's a Tesla, there are eight or more Tesla superchargers. Uh, to use one of those. That was my maximum bladder range uh, to get here. Uh, I did 243 miles, no, because that's now kilometers. I did 243 kilometers. So my bladder range is about 235k. 
kilometres, 235 kilometres, and I did 243. Uh, but what was interesting was, because this is the first time I've done a really long trip in this car, it is, uh, I am getting just fractionally less than five miles to the kilowatt hour, or 131 watt hours per kilometre. So I'll have to work out how many kilometres to the kilowatt hour that is. It, but it's pretty damn good. I'm really impressed. About 80%. 85% of that journey was on uh, freeways, highways, motorways, whatever you want to call them, autoroutes. So I was doing the speed limit. I didn't go above the speed limit. Uh, I just did the speed limit all the way, uh, really easy. I'm now going to get on the train under the tunnel. No, it doesn't go under the tunnel, because then it would be going through rock. The train in the tunnel with the cars in it. <laughs> So I've just stopped to, uh, not because uh, the, the car needs to charge, but far from it, still got 314 kilometres of range and I've done 414 so far total and uh, 170 since the last charge, which I did in Folkestone. The, the reason I've stopped is because of me. It's nothing to do with the car. I needed to stop. And then there's no, really nothing better than a Belgian road stop if you're desperate to use the loo because you have to pay 70 cents. Not a lot, a lot of money, it's 70 cents to use the loos. They're very nice loos, but I didn't have any change. And it's got a card reader on it and that didn't work. So I then had to buy a banana uh, to get some change so I could go to the loo. So it all worked out fine in the end. By the time I get to my destination, which is another 140 kilometers, I will have 32% left, one charge from Gloucestershire. I'm just outside Antwerp at the moment. so. That is amazing that it can do that. Uh, and it's such an easy car to drive. Anyway, I'm going to carry on, keep going until I get to Eindhoven, which is only 124 kilometres away. So not that far. All right. So I've made it. So it wasn't it wasn't that hard, to be honest. It's quite long and boring. I'm just going to tell you what. I, so I've done 552 kilometres uh, with one stop off to charge 343 miles but I'm now at a um, supercharger stand uh, next, very near my hotel which is which has 28 stalls and I'm one two three four five six seven Tesla Model S's and X's charging here no Model 3's so I didn't have to worry about not having somewhere to charge. So the car charge this car is currently charging 108 kilowatts so it's adding 700 and seven kilometers an hour of range. So those two points I wanted to make. One, I didn't have to wait to charge the car, I was doing something else. Two, Tesla have set the bar so high. If you were driving a Jaguar I-Pace, uh, you'd have to charge it over there on the public charger, which we had trouble using last year when we were doing our road trip. Um, it did work in the end, but it was a bit of a pain. It's so automatic to find these. It's so easy. You just walk up, plug them in, and they, they do their business. It's just... I don't know. You know, it just is... How are, are other electric, car companies going to compete with this? They've got to install and pay to install hundreds of chargers like this. And they're not doing it. They're slowly rolling out. I mean, there are some brilliant new chargers that are appearing, but it, they need a lot more. And... They're making the cars, but they're not making the chargers. Tesla make the cars and the chargers. And that sound you might be able to hear in the background is a load of cooling fans on Model Xs that have been thrashing along the auto routes. <laughs> anyway, that's all. I'm, that's it. That's my little trip to Eindhoven. Uh, and I'm sure I will uh, report back on what happens tomorrow. Very exciting. Big launch of the Lightyear solar-powered car fascinating if you haven't seen that episode have a look back it's about a few a couple of months ago we put it out when they first let us have a go in it well that's it for this update the light year event is really worth watching uh, there's links to, that will take you to that underneath this video um, i'd like to thank Lightyear for looking after me when i was in the netherlands uh, big thanks to tesla for making such an amazing car and for installing such an incredible ubiquitous charging network that is so easy to use other manufacturers, please take note and do something about it. A big thanks to our Patreon supporters. Uh, we are eternally grateful for the support you give us. It is the absolute foundation 
of this channel as it grows and, and gets more comprehensive and bigger and we do more stuff. Uh, really, really important and big thanks to you, the Patreon supporters. Uh, please do tell your friends about this series. Tell people to go. That's how it spreads. It's word of mouth only. We are not spending multi-millions of dollars on advertising. In fact, we're not spending one cent because we haven't got it. We're spending it all on making the shows. There's loads more episodes coming up soon, um, including, a, I'm really excited about this, a, a, a multiple episode guide to getting an electric car, how you put a charger in your house, how you use the public charging, a, a beginner's guide, if you like. Uh, I'm not presenting it. I'm going to wait uh, to announce that when we, when we finish that. Um, there's uh, loads, loads of, really a lot of electric car news. Uh, Johnny and I are going to be recording an update this week about the Frankfurt Motor Show where more electric cars are being launched than has ever happened in the history of the human race. So that is very exciting. Um, we'll be posting that later this week. But that's it. Uh, please uh, tell your friends. Uh, please do subscribe to this channel. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.